All right, BioT students, uh, hope everyone's doing well. I wanna walk you through the Bio2 lab packet for practicum three. And many of these things you'll probably already know, but let's walk through and make sure we're all on the same page as to what you need to learn. So first of all, uh, remember that taxonomy is always fair game on any quiz or practicum. So in this particular first uh, week of animals that we're doing, you're responsible for knowing the classification up to there. That means I can ask you any question about the animals and say, for example, what class is that animal in? Um, and this is the uh, classification. These are common names here. Um, so those aren't part of the classification. If I ask you common name uh, for the animal, th uh, for that group of animals, those would be appropriate uh, at that point there. But if I ask you for class or phylum, I'm looking for these words here, for example. Okay, so that's the first part, taxonomy, always fair game. Um, the next part uh, is on tissues. And so what will happen here is I will simply give you a picture of a tissue. Say, um, I give you a picture of smooth muscle. I'll just say, name the tissue. And the answer I'm looking for is smooth muscle or cartilage or fibrous connective tissue, whatever the name of that particular tissue is. Okay. Um, the next part is the question. So once again, just as we've done before, you have a packet and you have a bunch of questions in the packet and those questions uh, can be answered by looking at um, the lab cards, the PowerPoints that show you the information as to what the answers are. One thing I should point out though, is that sometimes the questions, um, if you're doing a really good job and say you're making flashcards and you're, you're knowing all the answers to all the questions, there are a couple of things that can throw you off. For example, this one here, uh, what level of organization do they demonstrate? And obviously that's gonna refer to the category of what you're talking about, the phylum periphera. So they're asking you what level of organization do the, they demonstrate referring to the phylum periphera. On a quiz or on a practicum, though, unfortunately, um, if I want to ask this question, I have to put it into context. So I can't just say what level of organization do they demonstrate without having um, an animal out or an organism out that refers to that. So I might say, for example, what level of organization do they demonstrate? And then in parentheses, I might write the word periphera. Or I might say, what level of organization do sponges demonstrate? Okay, same question really, and it has the same answer, but the subtlety and how it is being asked, where I've had to change a couple of words so that you would know I was talking about sponges. What I find is that people that study the questions word for word, um, and memorize that exact question and an exact answer for that can be thrown off by these slight changes. So you just need to be aware of that. I try really hard to use the exact wording that you see in the packet because I know you get thrown off by that, but there are cases like this one where depending on the context of the question, I may not be able to ask the exact question. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, for a chart like this, where we have all the information on there um, that you need to know also, the information's already provided to you on it, so you need to know that as well. Um, and this part here, um, I've already mentioned this in lecture, but remember that these are not classifications here, these are body types. So these are different body types based on how the water flows through these sponges they are not themselves classification. Um, okay. All right, let's see. Um, for the names, once again, you need to know the taxonomy as you see here. Okay. Um, but you 
for the common names and scientific names, some, some of them you need to know, some of, the, some of them you don't. So the hydra, you need to know. That one's a yes, okay? So if I ask you the common name of that one or show you a picture of it, the hydra, you need to know, okay? Um, the obelia, which is a scientific name, that one you don't need to know, okay? And again, this is in my Bio2 lab. Um, if you're studying with Mark Cooper students or Tyler Flissick students, we all have slightly different rules um, on what a student needs to know or not need to know, and that affects what kind of questions we might ask. So I'm not saying that's true for everybody. It's true in my class, um, so I'm letting you know that, okay? Portuguese man of war here, this one you do need to know. So that one's a yes, okay? Um, the gonesium here, that one you don't need to know. Um, and um, moon jellies or Aurelia, both of those are a no. You don't need to know those, okay? And then some of these, like sea anemones, this is a, a common name for many that are in this group. So this one's a yes, okay? Coral, same thing, common name for many that are in this group. So this one's a yes. Sea fans, same thing, common name for many in this group. So this one's a yes also. Um, and for the first lab, for first the first week of animals, this is where it ends. So we'll stop there, okay? So hopefully that gives you just a little bit of um, expectations of what you do need to know or not know as you're studying for the practicum. Hope everyone's doing well, and I will talk with you soon.